Good morning and welcome to the first lecture of the short course on microclimate for cultural heritage organized within the SOS Heritage Project. I'm Elena Verticchio, I'm a conservation scientist with a PhD in environment and cultural heritage, focusing on climate-induced risk assessment for the preventive conservation of cultural heritage. Currently, I'm a research fellow at the Italian National Research Council within the Institute of Heritage Science. The course is organized into three lectures, providing an introductory overview of the state of the art of the discipline from key projects and definitions to the regulatory framework and the approaches in microclimate monitoring and control in conservation spaces. This first lecture will briefly introduce the key concept in the study of the microclimate for the sustainable conservation of cultural heritage. According to the definition provided in the ASHRAE Handbook for Applications in Museums, Galleries, Archives and Libraries, the study of the microclimate for cultural heritage lies within the activities aimed to the conservation and preservation of cultural properties, which include the examination, documentation and research, as well as preventive care and minimization of deterioration and loss due to chemical, physical and biological mechanisms. In particular, we act in the framework of preventive conservation, which includes the formulation and implementation of strategies and procedures directed to the mitigation of deterioration and damage, such as the definition of appropriate environmental conditions for exhibition, transport and storage of the cultural objects, as well as pest management and emergency preparedness. In this slide is shown a scheme proposed by the Canadian Conservation Institute for the so-called 10 agents of deterioration. According to this classification, various agents should be considered in order to mitigate deterioration of cultural properties, from physical forces, fire, water and vandalism, to the environmental variables such as incorrect temperature, incorrect relative humidity, radiations and pollutants. As you may have already learned from other lectures of the SOS Heritage course, a situation of risk involves agents threatening cultural objects. In the study of microclimate, this definition can be adjusted focusing on the environmental conditions possibly causing unwanted changes in the conservation state of the objects. In particular, the investigation is directed to the environmental hazards in the conservation spaces to which the objects are exposed and that may trigger or worsen deterioration mechanisms, reducing their value and durability. Nevertheless, it is important to distinguish the concept of change from the concept of damage. Indeed, damage can be considered only the unwanted modification of an heritage object which cause an irreversible loss in terms of its authenticity and integrity of the physical and conceptual wholeness. The reference definition of microclimate was provided by Professor Dario Camuffo, an Italian physicist who founded the discipline and was recognized as an international expert in the field. According to his definition, the study of the microclimate should refer to the entire ambience surrounding the objects, including all the factors which interact with them and can have a direct influence on their conservation. The first approaches in the history of this field were to fix hydrothermal intervals with the aim to limit fluctuating conditions. Indeed, since the 19th century, it grew the awareness that cultural objects are better preserved in climate conditions different from those aimed at human comfort. Nevertheless, it was later noticed that these climate guidelines were unnecessarily strict and that maintaining such narrow ranges was too expensive and in some cases impractical, for example, for small and medium-sized museums. Starting from the 80s, the approach shifted to the definition of the allowable hydrothermal intervals considering the actual sensitivity of the objects to microclimate conditions, based on an increased knowledge of material types, conservation spaces and deterioration mechanisms. Current microclimate studies are based on the assessment of the relative risk of deterioration and damage due to the main environmental hazards. 
In this example, taken from the latest European standard providing specification for location, construction and modification of buildings intended for storage or use of heritage collections, it can be noticed that the risk due to temperature is addressed based on both the chemical stability of the materials constituting the objects and the relative energy demand associated with maintaining those thermal levels. The same approach applies to the relative risk of deterioration due to relative humidity of the air. In this case, mechanical stability and the risk of mold was considered together with the chemical stability in terms of material sensitivity to hydrolysis. Nevertheless, whenever managing the environmental conditions for cultural collections, conservation specialists should be consulted to identify proper temperature and relative humidity ranges for specific heritage materials. Climate change, and in particular global warming, will dramatically affect also the conservation of vulnerable objects conserved indoors. On the bottom of this slide are given examples of the way climate change is expected to increase in red or decrease in blue, the current chemical, mechanical and biological deterioration risks in historical buildings. For example, the chemical deterioration risk in terms of cellulose hydrolysis is expected to increase in some Mediterranean countries. The risk of mechanical damage, here given in terms of the number of salt crystallization cycles in a year, is expected to increase in northern European countries and to decrease in most of the Mediterranean ones. Finally, the biological risk calculated in terms of insect growth is likely to significantly increase in all the European countries, particularly in those of the Mediterranean area. I wish to conclude this introduction about microclimate studies for cultural heritage by giving an overview on pillar European projects that dramatically contributed to research in the field. On the bottom of the slide, you can see the European framework programs that over the last decades have financed projects focused on the conservation of cultural heritage. In particular, NOAA's ARC and Climate for Culture projects established the common framework for assessing the impact of climate change on built heritage and collections inside historical buildings. Sense Organ and Memory investigated the chemical risk for conservation due to pollutants and harmful environments, while Nemosign and Apache project were devoted to packaging solution for the preventive conservation of heritage objects. Finally, the mission of Collection Care Project was the implementation of an affordable service for the monitoring of cultural artifacts for small and medium-sized museums during display, storage and transport. Further research will be funded in the next years thanks to the latest framework program called Horizon Europe. This was the end of the first lecture. I wish to acknowledge the contribution by Dr. Francesca Frasca for the realization of these slides and thank you for the attention. Please feel free to contact me should you have any curiosity or question.